Hi people, Daniel from Devon Sons Guitars here and today I'm going to talk to you about how to paint your guitar neck. Hello and thanks for clicking to watch this video. It's one of a series of videos I'm making on how to paint your guitar, looking at every stage from stripping paint off, if you're repainting, to priming, putting colour on, top coating and then buffing and finishing. But this video talks specifically for necks. We're going to look at prepping and priming, putting your colour on and then getting it ready for that varnish coat and then varnishing. I won't go any further than that. At the end of this you can go and watch my video on how to buff and shine if you want to get the final finish on your neck. But there's no point repeating that here because it would just make this video way too long. I'm going to use an example of one main neck that I'm following through. It's a guitar that I made for Dr. Gothic. It's a steampunk themed guitar and it's got inlays that I put in that are cogs. Anyway, enough talking, let's get on with it. So this neck's actually a neck off of a Harley Benton guitar and the first step for any guitar that you're repainting is to give it a sand so you're getting some of that varnish off and scuffing it up so that it's going to let the new paint key into the surface, not just sit on top of the varnish and crack off. So I'm using here a uh, 600 grit wet dry paper. I find that's the best grit to use when you're prepping your guitars. So I've mentioned before my magic sauce and I'm mentioning it again. It's absolutely great for cleaning wood. It's great for cleaning dirt off wood and it's great for cleaning after you've sanded like this, where we've got residue of the varnish that was before and a bit of wood dust. It's basically a mix of meths, distilled white wine vinegar. And it was a trick I learned on a French polishing course years ago by someone that had been using it for a very long time in real life, in practice. Essentially, when you wipe it onto your guitar neck, it evaporates very quickly. It cleans, but it evaporates. So it doesn't, like if you use water, it doesn't soak in and affect the wood in any way. I'm speeding up bits of this video just so it's not too long. So here we are looking down on the neck and as you can see it's got some cogs that I embedded into the guitar. I'm using some masking tape here, it's some um, orange frog tape. It's my tape of preference but any will really do. And I'm taking one long strip which is the length of the neck and I'm putting it over the side of the fretboard so where you'll see the dots on the side of the fretboard and ideally I want to cover the bit that I don't want to paint but I'm leaving a very slight thin line of that exposure. You can just about see a thin brown line here. And the reason is if you accidentally put the tape on too far over onto the main guitar body, you're going to get a very obvious strip of the wood between the fretboard and the paint that you're putting on. So it's better to overlap the paint very slightly onto that brown fretboard. So just carrying on with the tape, once it's on the edge, which I as you see here, I stretch it from one end to another, but I don't just tape it down because it's going to go a bit wonky if you do that. I tape it down at one end and work my way along. And then once that's done, I can fold it over to cover the main fretboard itself, the main fingerboard area. It's a bit of give and take, pulling it backwards and forwards to make sure it's perfectly smooth. And at the end, I just sort of do this little pinch fold where I make sure the edge matches roughly where I want it to be and then I take down what's left. It can be really messy, the tape on top. It doesn't matter because you're going to pull it off in the end as long as there's no gaps. And I'm always using a scalpel or an X-Acto blade if you're in America just to make sure that the edges are nice and neat. So here I'm cutting back more than I need and then I'm using the straight edge of the masking tape to cover up the fretboard again, trying to leave a very slight thin brown line so the paint overlaps that and we don't have any of the bare wood showing through. Exactly the same at the other end on the headstock. I'm covering the nut here. There's no point taking the nut off unless you're changing the nut. Quick trim the X-Acto blade. In this video, I'm not going to talk about the design that I did on this particular headstock, but if you are interested, I did make a video about using transferred water slide decals to make designs and I use this guitar and this neck in fact as the example in that. So I'll leave a link in the YouTube video for you. Uh, here I am just using some blue tack to block over the truss rod to make sure that no paint gets stuck in there. You don't have to use blue tack, you could use anything that's going to jam in the area and also it doesn't have to be neat because if you've got a truss rod cover you're not really going to see in there. 
Here I am just using scraps of tape where it's got a straight edge just to neaten things up. And I can see there's a little frilly bit there, which I might end up using my X-Acto knife to trim. But essentially this is what we've got just masked over the fingerboard area. Now I'm going to spray my primer first on the top of the headstock, then along the back and the back of the headstock. Then I'll turn the neck round and spray from the other end. And I'm using this high coat grey primer, which is actually an automobile primer, but I think it's great. It dries quite quickly. It's really solid. I've been using it for years now. It needs a good two minute shake beforehand. I've actually shaken it off camera, but I always shake again just before I'm spraying. And I've got this device here, which allows me to rotate the guitar. But one thing that I haven't done, having just said to you that I was going to do it, is I've got this neck face down with the fingerboard down. Normally I'd start with the fingerboard up so I could spray the front of the headstock. I've missed that out this time. But as you can see, I'm working from one side to the other, starting the spray and finishing the spray off of the guitar. You don't want to start or finish your spray while it's still pointing at any piece that you're painting, because otherwise you might get a pool of paint. Now, I'll explain that a bit better in some of my other videos when I've really looked at priming, for example. I've got a whole video on priming. But the reason I put the priming here again is just to show you how I was taping up the neck and priming over it. And because I missed that headstock out, I'm now doing another method where I'm literally hanging it from the ceiling with a hook through one of the holes for the tuning pegs and spraying on. This is a method I used to use for doing the whole of the neck, but I actually now prefer doing it the way I am with the, with the neck flat down. Then after the prime, I'm giving a sand. Here I'm using a lighter sandpaper, so I'm using an 800 grit as opposed to the 600 grit that I used in the first place to get it ready. And really I'm just giving it a light rub to try and get any lumps off that might have come from the paint when I sprayed it from the can. Sometimes you can get little spatters. You can see where I rubbed it here, some of the wood's shining through. That's absolutely fine. And now I'm using a tack cloth just to get off all that, that dust. Tack cloths are great because they basically stick to the dust and pull it off. And now I'm adding the colour. Now this colour that I'm using here is a Montana Gold spray can. I've got a video about Montana Gold because I, I think they're a really good range of paints. There's so many different colours and they work really well on the guitars because you can poly or nitro over the top and it doesn't seem to affect the paint, or at least on all the makes and brands of, of top coat that I've used, it hasn't. Plus, there's just such a great range of colours. But because it's not designed for guitars, it does sometimes need a little bit of extra work, a bit of sanding between layers. But what I'm doing here essentially is putting on three layers, leaving 10 minutes between each layer for it to dry. You can see again, starting from one side, going to the other without starting or stopping the spray can on the neck body itself and making sure I'm not leaning over too far. One of the problems with this type of paint, the Montana Gold, is if you spray vertically, it works great. If you spray horizontally, there's a chance of getting that spatter, which you really don't want. But with one matte colour, it's not the end of the world because we're going to sand it smooth anyway and we'll be sanding it flat. Now I'm giving it a quick light sand, again with the 800 grit. This paint tends to clog up the sandpaper very quickly when you're sanding, so you can get through quite a lot of sandpaper. But again, the point here is just to get rid of any lumps, like I was in the priming layer, give it a wipe down with my magic sauce, and then get on and give it some more coats. What I've actually got here is the neck a few stages on where I've put some gold leaf on the headstock, printed my headstock decal onto it, and then on the back I've put some colour, sort of dry brushed it on to give it an effect because this guitar is meant to look like a steampunk guitar and I like this sort of dirty look. I've mixed some silver, gold and bronze in very lightly on the back and also put a decal of Dr. Gothic's logo. So once we pulled off the masking tape that was masking the area we had, 
we may have a problem where the paint has covered up some of the fret side dots. In which case, as on this guitar, I'm going at it with my X-Acto blade or my scalpel just to clean off the paint, scrape it away on the area where that side dot is. This guitar, by the way, is my giraffe finished guitar, which if you go over my YouTube channel, you'll see a final video about that one. Now I'm going back in and masking, but this time I'm only masking the top of the fingerboard. So I'm putting my tape on from one end to another. And I'm using my thumb to really rub down tight and make sure it sticks to the side of the frets. Then I can fold it over and stick it to the top of the fretboard, but I've got to make sure that I'm not covering the sides and the side dot like I was last time because I want to varnish over that. By varnishing over that, I will help seal in the paint where the paint ends where the original tape was. You can see here a slight raised line of the paint which is catching the light and almost looks grey or white. Now that's where the paint ends and the fretboard starts. So by putting coats of varnish over the top and then sanding the varnish, we can smooth it out without removing any paint, just removing layers of varnish that go on. Again, just trimming it so it's covering exactly where I need it to and nowhere else and that the trims are very neat. Getting very neat trims and cuts is important. And now it's ready to go back into my spray booth where I should have said all along, I've got my extractor fan on, I'm wearing my mask and I'm now giving it three coats of Spray Max Clear Coat. Working as before, from off the guitar, along the guitar body, and then off the end before I stop spraying. And these coats are really going to overlap that edge of the paint just below the fret side dot markers, seal it in, and then when I sand it and buff it up, of which I've got a whole video of sanding and buffing in general for your guitar, not specifically a neck, but when we do that, it's gonna make sure everything is smooth and perfect. Excellent, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please do share and recommend my channel to other people. It's support of people like you that really helps my channel grow. If you're working on a guitar neck yourself as part of a build, why don't you tag me on social media? I always love seeing what other people do and it's great to share. Like I said at the beginning, this is part of a series of videos. So if you're watching now on YouTube, you can click this card and see the playlist that covers all of the other videos in the series about painting, which I will keep adding to. There's one video that focuses on Spray Max, 2K Spray Max, which is the varnish that I put on this neck. And there's a link to that one here. But until next time, happy strumming.